And that ultimately is why I was so happy that the games are kind of coming in thick and thin for Liverpool right now. So many games a week because you can go away to AC Milan and get a result like that even after a kind of shaky start. That Pulisic goal, I thought, I was thinking to myself when that happened, like, because we had time to think while he was on the ball for that long. I was like, you know, he's not going anywhere here. You know, Canate's got this locked off, you know. He's, he's kind of wandering into nothing, but just out of nowhere, he shoots and it goes into the bottom corner. The side netting, it's a fantastic shot and credit to him. That was, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. I don't think Alison Becker expects it either, really, or, or anyone. You know, we're kind of expecting him to maybe cross it in to the far post, something like that. But such a powerfully low driven shot beats Alison, beats Canate. Fantastic and fair play. And honestly, after such a shaky start, I was really, really worried. I was thinking to myself, you know, what's what's happening here? Is slot done already? You know, because I tend to overreact. And I was I was thinking, oh god, this could be a long day. This could, oh dear, this could get bad. You know, one ill after three minutes, you know what happens in your mind, that sort of stuff. But it wasn't to be. And Liverpool ultimately putting in a really calm, controlled performance, coming back in such a calm fashion. It was really, really impressive. And I think after the weekend, after Nottingham Forest, that couldn't have gone much better. Going down, you know, conceding the goal initially and then coming back in that fashion was probably actually a good thing because now we know, we know that this team can actually do it when they go behind. You know, they can, they've shown that they can have that kind of a reaction to a game. And it was incredible. It was really incredible. There were very few poor performances in that game from a Liverpool standpoint. And um, we'll get into that later. I'm going to go through each player, kind of assess what went on, you know, what were their strengths, what were their weaknesses in that game specifically. And, you know, hopefully from that, we'll have a good idea of what went well and what went wrong. Obviously, other than this kind of general analysis, which I'm going to continue now. And I think one of the things that was really striking to me at the start of the game was how easily the midfield and how just how easily in general we were to play through. And, you know, that out ball to Teo Hernandez was just on all the time for Mike Magnon. When Salah kind of, you know, he likes to do his kind of outward runs that kind of close off the fullback as a passing option. But we saw Magnon just so many times play it over him. And then suddenly Teo Hernandez just has so much space to run into or the opposite fullback, I've forgotten his name. But the amount of times we saw that was really incredible. And I think what was even more incredible was the way that Slot actually dealt with it. And that was by, because Liao had Trent pinned so far back through, through a good portion of that 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes of the game, bringing Trent in between Liao and Teo Hernandez means that that out ball isn't as easily available. And then we have Canate kind of shift in to deal with, um, what's his face, Liao. And that just kind of means that we're not as easy to play through, you know, our press is a bit more resolute in its in its function, you know. And I thought that was great. And that showed a lot of tactical adaptability for Slot. And ever since he made that change, the game was just a complete breeze. Like there was not a problem in that game. The Liverpool did not deal with or have the facility, not have the facilities to deal with. Everything, everything seemed pretty calm, pretty, you know, nothing really going to bother us. And it didn't really. Oh, AC Milan had about two shots in that whole second half. And they all came in the first five minutes, I think. One was the goal. Really a, a quiet day for Alisson. Not much going on. And that's good because that is ultimately what we want. We want him to not have to make many saves. What we want him to do, ideally, as Slot said, is to just play out from the back. And that's what he got to do today. And I thought that was great. But yeah, let's get into kind of each player and how they did kind of throughout the game. Uh, so yeah, let's start off with, uh, we'll start off with Alice. Uh, we won't start off with Alison because I've already just sort of touched on him. We'll start off with Simicass, who did, who did have a bit of a shaky start to the game. I was, I saw the, uh, I saw the starting lineup, the starting 11 before the game. And I was sort of thinking to myself, of all the players that I wouldn't have taken out, it would have been Robertson. I don't think I would have taken him out. That is a change. And I thought I was kind of justified in having that opinion when Simakas, you know, is too far up the pitch for that first goal. The midfield doesn't rotate quickly enough. But I mean, to be honest, they can't really be expected to rotate that quickly. Simakas just far too up the pitch, bombing forward, can't get back. And Pulisic is just completely open and kind of Canate and Van Dijk are stretched. And um, that's ultimately what leads to the first goal. So really, really poor from Simakas in the first few minutes. 
But I think he brought it back throughout the game from a defensive standpoint, at least. From a defensive standpoint throughout the entire game after that first sort of 15 minutes where he looked a bit shaky, I thought he was fantastic. Not a problem. Pulisic hardly got on the ball, so really didn't have much to do. But when he did have the ball, he dealt with it absolutely fine. And I think he did leave a lot to be questioned on the ball, you know, because we all saw that shot, that weak-footed shot, the right-footed shot that just went out for a throw practically. Sort of <laughs> Roberto Carlos-esque, but kind of in the opposite fashion that you'd want it to be, you know, zoomed out for a throw. Unfortunate. And also just a really good chance. I remember Sobazai sort of being played in by McAllister with a brilliant through ball and he plays it back to Simicast, and Simicast just kind of spears it across the face of the goal. Absolutely no one's there. And it did kind of look like he didn't really know whether it was meant to be a shot or a pass. And I guess ultimately we'll, we will never know. But yeah, ultimately a really, really solid performance after the first sort of 10 minutes for Simicas. More, more could be asked for him on the ball. Right, moving on to the centre-backs, I thought obviously absolutely imperious. Scored two goals as well between them and probably won us the game. Like, Morata did absolutely nothing in that game. Absolutely nothing. Had a few dives, complained a bit. That was it. Other than that, the physical battle was completely won by Canate and Virgil van Dijk. They did not give him a sniff. And thankfully, because honestly, if they gave him anything more, you know, he might have gotten something. And he was kind of pissing me off with his ranting and complaining. It just reminded me of a certain Manchester United player, actually, kind of throughout the game. But yeah, what, an, what a performance. What a performance from both of them. Obviously, getting in the headers uh, from the corners, the positioning, it was really weird, actually. Really weird, because you think kind of Mike Mignon would sort of come for those sort of balls that are really kind of in on top of him. But I think as we saw, he was injured kind of sort of earlier in the game. He had a bit of a, a niggle, a bit of a something going on there. And maybe he wasn't as airily, uh, airily dominant as he might usually be, because he doesn't come in to get those balls and take them out of the air for his defenders. And ultimately, Virgil van Dijk and Canate, six foot five, both of them, you know, that's that's pretty hard to deal with. And we get two goals from it. So that's fantastic. And obviously off the ball as well, they were just fantastic. Really, nothing got through them. As I said, Morata given nothing. Yeah, fantastic performances from both of them. Trent. This is a funny one because I was really angry with Trent in the first 10 minutes, but no player played really that well in the first 10 minutes at all. So we'll obviously give him, the, uh, give him a benefit of the doubt there. He did give the ball away a few times, kind of trying to play those Hollywood passes and that kind of pissed me off, I think, in, the, in those first 10 minutes. But other than that, he was fantastic and obviously got the assist uh, for Canate for that first goal, which was really instrumental because, you know, we were really dominant in that first half. It were kind of Our attackers were struggling to kind of put something together and actually finish it. So Canate and Trent just, you know, linking up there to create, to create that corner goal, it was fantastic. And I think the team really needed it. But Trent, I mean, he was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I saw a stat um, that Milan had two chances in the first half, two chances created, and Trent had three. And I think that really just says it all. What a, a creative display from Trent. The amount of balls he sort of pinged and that switch to, to Gakpo was just always on and he always found him. And it was just a joy to watch, really. Absolute joy to watch. Huh. Let's move on to the midfield. And I think this is where the game was really won. After those tweaks were made by Slot, they were just incredible. And we looked so difficult to play through. And you could see that the Milan players were kind of frustrated with how hard we were to play through because McAllister and Gravenberger and Sobosai were just absolutely everywhere, as they have been in the past few games for Liverpool. And I'm all for it, let's be honest. I want to start with Gravenberger. Uh, I think he was phenomenal and probably man of the match for a reason. Uh, arguably, he was absolutely sensational. Just become an interception maestro. I don't know what the hell Slot has done to that man, but it is just incredible to see kind of how good he's become defensively. Under Jurgen, you know, he was he did leave a lot to be done, a uh, lot to be asked of, questionably, where he'd sort of run into a tackle, kind of get nutmeg, the ball would just be passed past him, you know, something like that. He was just so easy to get past, but now he is so clinical in those tackles, in those interceptions. It is a joy to watch. And, you know, he really, really has surely been one of the midfielders, of most informed midfielders in the world this year. He's been incredible, absolutely incredible. And if he can keep this up 
and stay fit, you know, it's it would be fantastic for Liverpool. You know, really looking looking at winning those major trophies, he is going to be instrumental to that, I think, Ryan Gravenberch. Onto his kind of hybrid six slash eight partner, Alexis McAllister. Not going to get a lot of the plaudits for that performance. And I don't think he will. I think the spotlight is more on Sobers Line Gravenberg to sort of drive and make those chances, make things happen. McAllister just makes things tick. He gives us so much control. And I love this performance from him today. The amount of times he just receives the ball neatly in a tight bit of space and he just finds the right pass. He does that every single time. And I think that is kind of un... You can't put a price on that. It's fantastic. Just finding those balls. And I think a lot of other players that receive the ball, kind of, they don't find that pass. You know, maybe, I'm not going to name names actually, because we'll get onto it later, but not every player in this game, you know, then their decision making wasn't fantastic. But McAllister, every time he got that ball, you kind of knew he was going to make the right decision. And he did. And it was really, really pleasing to watch. On to Sobersly. A really mixed bag, sometimes off the ball, you can count on Sobers to be absolutely fantastic. And today was absolutely no different. He was absolutely everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. What, like I said, we've got to see this guy's heat map somewhere. I, it must be ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But off the on the ball, sorry. Not entirely there yet, is it? You know, a few misplaced passes. Kind of reminded me of Salah in the last game. Just a lot of misplaced passes. You know, sometimes kind of messing up those easier five yard, 10 yard passes that I think he should be making more on a regular basis. But what you cannot, what you cannot downplay is how slot, you know, he said, I want this guy to get more goals and assists. I want him to be more involved in the goal scoring process. And what does he go and do? He goes and gets a goal and finishes off a really spectacular piece of play. You know, Cody Gakpo playing it into him, but Dominic Sobersley plays it into Cody Gakpo initially and then finishes off the play himself with a fantastic finish. You know, even if Magnon was sort of in the center of the goal, uh, it wasn't Magnon at that point, was it? Sorry, it was the, the younger goalkeeper. I've forgotten his name. But even if he was positioned kind of appropriately to receive that shot, there was no saving it at all. Absolutely no saving it. It was pinpoint perfect. I know it came off his knee, but, you know, we'll we'll, we'll have a go at him when he, misses, uh, when he misses like that. But when you score, you've got to give credit where credit is due. And it is a phenomenal finish. Absolutely phenomenal. And his pressing, his pressing is just... The engine on that man is just uh, absolutely unbelievable. If he can stay fit, we need that midfield to stay fit. That's that's pretty much what I've taken from this uh, this stint of five games for Liverpool. We need this midfield to stay fit. They do absolutely everything for us. You know, they're just everywhere on the pitch, linking up play, playing uh, playing forward balls. You know, it's the really heartbeat of our team as it as it should be. But you know, sometimes recently over Klopp, it hasn't been entirely, and that's what we got today. And they just linked everything up so spectacularly. I want to give them credit. I want to give them credit where credit is due. Ooh, so moving on to the attackers, uh, I'll start with Salah because I thought he was really, really unlucky. Mohamed Salah should have had a goal in this game. I think we can all agree. Hit the bar twice. Uh, didn't really, uh, wasn't as creative this game, but really hit the bar twice and probably should have scored a goal. Got unlucky. You know, maybe ne uh, another time he takes that shot, it sort of bounces off Mignon back into the goal or it hits the underside of the bar and goes in. You know, who knows? Just a bit unlucky in that game, but really, really a good performance. We saw against Forrest, you know, the amount of passes that he misplaced, as I mentioned earlier, just really, really frustrating to watch. But in this game, it just felt different. You know, he was doing his role. He was kind of linking up play, you know, po probing, probing on the right side. You know, can we get something on this side? You know, the answer is no. We go back, you know, just recycling possession, which I felt he didn't really do against Forrest. He kind of got the ball, kind of tried to take on his man, failed, tried to pass, failed. And, you know, that really was frustrating to watch. But today it was just completely different and everything kind of ticked for him, except for that finish. And I thought he was absolutely fine in, uh, in that position. Really, really solid performance. Now, this is going to be controversial, or maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know what you thought about this, but Jota, moving on to Jota, I'm not... God, that was a really rough watch for Diego Jota, I have to say. He just did not seem to kind of click, didn't really gel. There, he had a good um, he had a good few sequences of play where he'd kind of linking up with Sobazai, linking up with Salah. But ultimately, his finishing, which is what we kind of know uh, Jota to be so good at and so uh, so prolific kind of in terms of his finishing, just wasn't there today. 
I remember a good few times where, you know, he really should do better, where he was played in, played in on the left and he can square it to Gakpo just so easily, but he kind of has a shot. And, you know, if you're taking a shot in that sort of position, you have to hit the target, but he just doesn't hit the target. And Gakpo looks really frustrated as he should be because, you know, he should have had a goal from that being in such a good position, but it just didn't really come off. And there were a good few, good few uh, situations where that did happen for Jota and it just didn't really come off for him. Uh, really leaves questions to be uh, asked as to whether he starts on, uh, on, is it Saturday? I think it's Saturday against Bournemouth because really hasn't been what we'd hoped. One goal in five games, really not putting away his chances as we'd usually see. Does Nunez deserve to come in in that position and, and you know, have a good go at it? What do you think? Let me know. Anyway, moving on to, uh, moving on to Gakpo, I thought, Another contestant for Man of the Match. What a performance from Cody Gakpo. The guy, the guy was just electric. I was getting Euros and uh, World Cup flashbacks. He looked like um, Netherlands Gakpo. Absolutely phenomenal. The man was on fire. Every time he got the ball, I was thinking to myself, he's either going to take someone on here and get into a really dangerous position, create something, or he's going to lose it in their third, which is absolutely fine. And I think whatever happened... It was fine, and I think, but I think most of the time he got past his man or two men at once, and and just went for it. And the amount of chances he created was phenomenal. And cutting in on the inside, you know, those long range shots, really Munyon does well to save a few of them. One of them was particularly powerful, I remember, and that that was a good save for an injured goalkeeper. Let's just say because really Munyon should have come off sooner, but. Yeah, he does fantastically well there. But yeah, Gakpo was such a fantastic outlet for us as well because the amount of times the ball was on the kind of right-hand side, a bit congested, you know, we're looking for an out ball and Cody Gakpo is just on the opposite side, waiting to receive and he just brings it down perfectly. Fantastic touch. He starts running at his man and that's what we've really missed, I think. Just someone that's going to run at their man and really just have a go at them. You know, I'm either going to take you on and win and make something or I'm going to lose the ball in, the th- in, the, in your third and it's not going to be too co- consequential for the team. And that's what I think Gagba provided really fantastically. Not to downplay Luis Diaz, of course. He has obviously been good at that as well, but not something we've necessarily seen from Gakpo is, you know, being direct and taking his man on, which we saw today and I was so happy for. And really, I think, you know, on another day, he wins man of the match. And I think on, you know, maybe Slot kind of has a bit of a decision to be, to be made for the weekend, you know, who do I start? Because Diaz, obviously coming on, looked fine. But Gakpo just looked like he was on another level today. Really looked phenomenal. Really phenomenal. Right. The one position we have not been through is goalkeeper. And that is Allison. And really not much to say because he didn't have much to do. And as I said earlier, ultimately what Slot wants is for his goalkeepers to be able to just play out from the back. And, you know, ideally they shouldn't even be there and have to make a save at all. They should just be there to play out from the back. And that's really what Alice, all Alisson had to do today. You know, there are a few, few kind of speculative shots from AC Milan from outside the box. But other than that, I really don't recall many major kind of shots on target, at least, that he had to deal with. And one of them, uh, I think there were two on target, and one of them was the goal. So other than that, maybe he can do better for the, for the goal. I'm not entirely sure he can because Canate, I think, sort of blocking his view. Uh, other than that, I thought it was a very solid performance from Alison Becker, really, but not much to be said just because of how little he had to do, ultimately. Overall, what a fantastic performance and what a way to kind of bounce back from such a such a frustrating loss on the weekend at home to Nottingham Forest. It almost feels like we've played better away this season so far than we have at home, which is a bit bit weird. Well, that's just my kind of perspective of it because, you know, United 3-0, Milan 3-1 and uh, Ipswich where we started off a bit rough, but we've turned it around and, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We will see. But ultimately a really solid start for the season for Arnie Slot. And I'm, I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy that we've turned this around. And I think kind of ahead of that, uh, after that, in hindsight, after that Nottingham Forest defeat, this is probably one of the best ways we could have gone and probably one of the best things we could have gone and done is go down and then show that mentality, show that desire to get back into the game and then go and win 3-1, really at a, at a gander, like really not much effort required. We made that look really, really easy today. And I'm just, I'm so happy. What a fantastic result. 
Let me know what you thought though in the comments down below and maybe check out this video if you just kind of enjoyed me chatting to the camera, giving my thoughts on the games and yeah, maybe I'll see you next time.